Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, back with the Amiga 1200, my Amiga 1200. In this video, I'm going to fit a little clock uh, module. Now, there are some extra features that brings that uh, really appeal to me, actually. One of them is being able to monitor the internal temperature of the Amiga. Now, if you've seen the previous uh, videos leading up to this, we recapped this Amiga 1200 with a polymer cap kit and uh, fixed a problem with the colour as well. And then, hopefully, you may have seen me fit the Terrible Fire TF1260. So, I've got an 060, it's only the LC version, but an 060 uh, processor in here and the amazing Terrible Fire TF1260. So, yeah, it runs really well, this machine, and I have not stopped using this for the last month or two. One thing you might notice, can you see it's less yellowed? It seems, uh, as I've been using this, and it's been out in the, the, the light there on the table, seems to have got lighter over a period of time, which is uh, really interesting. Um, and it's not like UV light that's got onto it, it's just like ambient light. So yeah, I'm pleased with that actually. I thought I was going to have to try and retro it again, but as things have transpired, it's, it's looking a lot better. So as you can see, I purchased this from uh, Amiga Kit. I'm not sure how low profile this is, whether it'll interfere with the shielding, maybe I'll have to remove the shielding. I'll be honest, it's probably a good idea to remove the shielding on these actually, um, in general, just to you know allow heat to, to get out, hot air to get away from the board. So yeah, that is very small, I don't think that's going to cause any issues. I will of course need to fit, uh, I'm not sure I've got the right uh, pitch here, of the uh, pin header. I, I think my board has not got pin header there. Yeah, so I may have to order a uh, strip of uh, pin header for this. You can see it's got a real-time clock chip on there. We've got the little button cell, um, and it's got some sort of little MCU or something here, I think. Um, and as I said, this can measure the um, ambient temperature. That's what really appeals to me. But also, I wanted a real-time clock on my 1200 for as long as I can think, really, since I had the 1200. And you might think, well, it's the most pointless thing. Who uses it? But I use it a lot. As soon as I switch my Amiga on, I've got that little time notification the top right there, I know what time it is, and it's something you take for granted. It might seem crazy, but just being able to quickly see what time it is on my Amiga while I'm using my Amiga is super useful. It just saves me having to go and find my phone or, you know, switch back to the PC desktop to have a look at the, uh, the time on the PC. Yeah, so I went looking through some of my component trays and actually I found some pin header that is the right pitch here. It's not 2.54. Uh, you can see, you know, that will fit perfectly. So I can literally cut two strips of that, and uh, I'll probably just, you know, stick them into the PCB holes there. I might have to unblock the holes first, they're probably solder filled. Um, and connect this on, make sure it's nice and straight and flat, and then solder a couple of points to anchor it. It's going to be dead simple. The hardest bit, obviously, is just tearing this whole thing down in order to fit this. So because I've been using this with the uh, TF1260, I've had it so that the lid is not screwed on, and I'm just going to keep keep using it that way for the moment. I've put all the screws into a bag. It just means I can get easily in and out of there to change things, you know, regards to the compact flash card and stuff. Uh, but we will now have to, you know, disconnect all the keyboard and everything. So I find the easy way to get the keyboard out is to use a pair of fine nose pliers and lift the hood. The, this side here is always really problematic. You have to kind of straighten the ribbon a little bit so that you can get onto the hood and lift the hood and then very carefully just to pull the ribbon out yeah you can see the hood has come off with it I can stick that back on in a minute the main thing is I want to avoid damaging the ribbon and just tilting this like this to work out where to put it you can see it's got the pin header strips there already I don't need to solder that on at all that's gonna be great I can literally just plug it on I think uh, if I, you can see this is taped on the metal clips on this long since gone in the past. I could just leave that off. But I think with a, <laughs> some careful manipulation, if I undo that screw there, I think I should just be able to just mount that. Um, is it going to fit under the shielding though? I'm not so sure. Actually, I think the shielding will interfere, so we may have to whiz the shielding. But you know what? That might not be a bad thing. So I undid the screw here and just lifted the shielding up and then slid it under here like this and it's aligned. Let's just now try and push that onto position. Uh, is it, yeah, you can see here the shielding will have to go. Look, there's no way that's going to fit with the shielding. It should explain that actually in the uh, documentation before you buy one of these, but I've been meaning to kind of get rid of the shield for a while, so let's remove it. Now I've got the shielded off, we can uh, just fit that on there, so just make sure it's carefully aligned, it should be right up against the ROMs here, but it is important you get it on both rows there, in fact I had it misaligned there I think, just try that again. 
yeah there we go oh, that's on both correctly so it would appear that the temperature thing is uh, it says here remote sensor so I need to go and find something I can plug into here I'm not sure where to get that from I'll check the Amiga kit website um, I'm thinking about putting the sensor on top of the 060 CPU over here actually it doesn't mean I've had to relocate the fan, I had to use some fresh tape, but you can see that's well and truly stuck on there. I've been using this for, I would say, about a month, and it's been rock solid, stable in position. It's just having to, having to take it off the shielding and, you know, sit it on the board there. Uh, you know, we've had to relocate it. So, yeah, it's secured on the drive, secured on the board, uh, and it's roughly pointing in this direction here. It is annoying these cables are kind of in the way. I guess I could sort of route them around that way a little bit. I think the way this works is it goes that way and uh, yeah if you get a bit of a deflection there that could help even more with air but I found that the little vents on the top there I can feel warm airflow as it's sucking air out. At some point I will come back in here again and redo the wires on this because they're a little bit crusty the wires for the you know switchable compact flash I've got two cards in here as you can see and of course we've got our compact flash card here as well on the EID interface. So dead straightforward to do. In many ways I'm glad I went back in here because that shield and I think was a bad idea. Bad idea leaving that on. It's nice to try and have a complete unit, you know, in your collection, but um and I'm not sure where this yellow piece of plastic came from. Was this something they all came with? I mean I've screwed it back down there and left it there, but I'm not sure that that was originally shipped with these. But anyway, it should last a lot longer without being baked under the shielding. Right, so my temperature sensor has arrived. It's got a little bit of sticky tape there. I might need to do something with that later. And obviously a JST connector, so it literally is a case of plugging it in and sticking that on top of the CPU. Right, so I've balanced the keyboard there. I'm not sure which way this connector goes. I shall look straight that way. Yeah, there we go. So that has clipped on there. Now I have to admit, I really love this kit from Media Kit. One thing I would say is on the website when you're ordering, it, you know, it gives you the option, option for a battery, yeah, it doesn't mention this sensor, it's not there as a, you know, while you're buying it, and stick this uh, thing in your basket kind of thing, uh, I could do it curling that somehow, it's, you know, it's going to stick up, isn't it? You know, is that going to stay stuck? That is not going to stay stuck. One of the problems here with this is the curl is kind of like making it go where you don't want it, if that makes sense. Ideally, you'd want this underneath the CPU. Uh, I'm not, I can't quite remember now whether there's a gap under the CPU socket, but there's no way to get the wires and things under there anyway, so that is quite difficult. You could sort of wedge it somehow in the heat sink or something there, uh, but I'm kind of inclined to try and just stick it there like that. Yeah, hopefully this will stay in place. Could do with doing something with this here to stick that down, I don't know. I think what I might do is just pull this little PCB off, if I can get it up. Yeah, run the wires like that down there, underneath it, and then carefully realign it. There we go. Uh, it just helps hold the wires there, doesn't it? But can you see that's coming off, look? I think the other thing I'm going to do here is get a, a double sided sticky sponge and stick it under that part there so that there's no stress on the wire causing it to peel off there if that makes sense. Yeah so I'm just going to cut a tiny little sliver here just to stick under that. So I've just cut a tiny little pad here that I am going to stick under there because look that's just going to come off that. It, it's all sticking on but it's going to fall off isn't it? And as I say, I'm going to stick that under the uh, flat part there. Yeah, there we go. Peeled that off. And then we'll stick it back down here, as near to the centre as possible. But press this side down here. So that's just going to support it. So hopefully that will stay on there. I'm going to test it for a period of time. The other thing I could do here, as I say, is just melt some hot melt glue over here somewhere. Obviously, then if you measure the temperature, it's going to be pretty warm because of the, the glue. But if you let it all dry and solidify and stuff, I would imagine some hot melt glue there would just hold that and uh, it shouldn't move. Anyway, let's just carefully reassemble this now. Hopefully my keyboard's all right. And we'll give it a test. So there are two components to the uh, Amiga Kit software here, the driver. You've got this folder here, 
And if you double click that, it doesn't do anything. That needs to be loaded. Uh, and the way you do that, you load it on boot, by the way. And what you do with that is, where is it now? WB Startup, drag it in there. Can you see that? I've dragged a copy of that icon in there. So that's the driver, if you like. And when you launch Workbench, it will run that and be memory resident. And then the other component to this is the display bit. So the other folder contains another readme and another executable with the same icon, but this one's got display on the end there. And if we double click that, you can see we've got a really nice display there. Now the interesting thing is the other power supply that's been fully recapped, that hovers between 5.8 and 5.10 volts constantly. So when it's under load, it'll drop to 5.08. When it's not under load, you just sat at the, the desktop here, it'll be at 5.10. So straight away I can see the difference between my two power supplies. The power supply I'm using in here, as you can see, it's just there at 4.98. So uh, yeah, this power supply perhaps needs a recap. Just looking at it, yeah, it hasn't been recapped. Uh, and it's the lighter one. I think the other one is slightly heavier than this. So this one's not got as much oomph, um, certainly. And you can see there the internal motherboard temperature 26.4 and the CPU temperature 29.7. So, uh, under load, I found in the other room here, it'll go up to about 46 degrees, actually, or 44, 45, 46 degrees, somewhere around that, the CPU. Because, obviously, I'm slightly overclocking it to 62.5 megahertz. It's rated at 50. Um, but, nevertheless, it's really useful to be able to see these things here. This is the first time on an Amiga I've ever seen the ability to measure the 5-volt supply rail. So I would suggest this is a really good product to go out and get for an A1200. And what you could do is you could get one of those clock port expanders. There are two-way, three-way and four-way ones, I think. So, because there are other, you know, the clock port is not just for a real-time clock. You can stick other things there, like, I don't know, an audio card. I think there was a few of those going around as a mod you can do. And there may be other types of clock mod boards that you could add so maybe get a you know a two-way or three-way or, or four-way expander before you fit the real-time clock but uh, this one for me kit fantastic yes a 10 out of 10 for me i'm very very impressed with it the one thing i would say is the extra sensor cable there for the temperature it should have been an option on the drop down list there there wasn't there was an option to select the battery but not the extra cable so of course i ordered it uh, with the button cell as the optional extra and then it came and i was like oh i haven't got the cable where do i get the cable from and i went back to their website and searched and found the cable and it was about an extra six pounds i think so yeah a little bit pricey that cable on its own i would prefer they did like an all-in-one option where you pay i don't know 27 28 29 pounds ish for the whole lot including the battery and the sensor cable so only a small one this time around if you would like to support the channel please see the coffee and patreon links down below i'll catch it in the next video